Hello everyone. In this video, we will see the steps to successfully boot the Linux kernel on the ARM Cortex A8 processors. We will take example hardware as BeagleBone. The BeagleBone uses SOC AM335X Sitara processor, which is based on ARM Cortex A8 architecture. Now, to run Linux on this embedded board, we need set of software component such as bootloader and kernels. The BeagleBone uses two-stage booting as its internal RAM is very small. We will see how the booting works. First, when the reset switch is pressed, it will call the on-chip bootloader. The on-chip bootloader or ROM bootloader present inside the SOC. <coughs> we cannot change the on-chip bootloader. The ROM bootloader is a tiny bootloader which runs out of ROM of the SOC. Its functionality is very limited and its job is to load next stage bootloader from the internal memory. The functionality of the ROM bootloader is simple and it will load the secondary bootloader from the internal memory and execute that. The second stage bootloader referred as SPL that stand for secondary program loader. Sometimes it is also called as MLO which stands for memory loader. The function of second stage bootloader is to load and execute the third stage bootloader is called as uh, uBoot. The role of third stage bootloader is to load and execute the Linux kernel from the DDR memory of the board. Like this, the booting actually takes place in three stages. The stages are ROM bootloader loads SPL and the SPL load the third stage bootloader and then stage third stage bootloader or uboot loads the kernel and the root file system after the kernel loads and starts executing it will look for the root file system the root file system is required to complete the boot process successfully we can take example of bootloaders in upcoming videos the third stage bootloader is used as uboot and SPL also derived from the U-boot. To boot the Linux kernel, we need four components. The ROM bootloader, secondary bootloader, and the third stage bootloader are the U-boot. And then the Linux kernel and the root file system. We will look into the functionality of each component in upcoming videos.